In this video, we're going to start looking at sketching polar equations. In the exam, you'll be expected to show the general shape and any points of intersection. I generally have three different methods to tackle these. One, do it by inspection. So if you know what the polar curve is going to look like, go ahead and draw it. If you don't, the second method is to think about what it's going to look like in Cartesian form. And the third method, if applicable, use values for sine and cosine to plot maximum and minimum points. We'll go through a few of these and see which ones we need to use. And then we'll get Autograph to look at them first as well. So R is equal to 6. I would spot this to be a circle centre 0, 0, radius of 6. If you were unsure about that, let's go back to our definition that R is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So if r is 6, then 6 is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Therefore, x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to 36. And we recognize this in Cartesian form as a circle, center, 0, 0, radius, 6 units. So all we do is put this on, and it looks something like so, give or take. My diagrams are never going to be hugely accurate, and that distance right there would be 6. So we'd simply put on six units. We can look at that in autograph. So if you want to get autograph and you want to plot this or you want to put this in a calculator, let's see what um, it'll do. So it'll take this one. It'll in enjoy R is equal to six. Um, fairly straightforward. Uh, there we go. Cool. So just a circle. Um, Send zero, zero, radius of six units. OK, let's look at another one. So that's that one done. OK, theta is equal to pi by 4. This is a, uh, 5 pi by 4. This is a half line. And we need to show on our diagram that it is a half line. So it's making an angle of 5 pi by 4 with the initial line. If you want on your diagram, you can put right here where it should have been, but that is not included. That would be pi by 4. So I appreciate, again, my diagram isn't wildly accurate. Let's make that look a bit... Uh, a bit better. Is that going to... Nah. It's going to look something, give or take, like so. And we can show that. Let's just grab a pen. If you wanted to show that, you could uh, show the initial line. And round we come, like so. And simply state 5 pi by 4. It's absolutely vital, though, that you do not put this part of the line on in a solid line. So let's see our autograph uh, in action. So let's uh, put this one on. So what we've got now is theta is going to be equal to uh, 5, and then it was pi by 4. So let's place that in. And there we can go. We can see now that we've got this uh, dotted line. So let's kill those ones. Um, in fact, let's leave one there. So that's that one sorted. So half line, and you need to st stress half line. OK, R is equal to 2 theta. This one is a spiral. If you want to draw up a set of uh, a table of values, it may help you. So if we draw up a table of values just here, and uh, we'll grab those up. So that's really not working, is it? Um, let's grab a different one. Let's grab a table of values. So if we take now theta, and we'll take theta, and we're going to do this from uh, 0 to 2 pi. So if we take theta, and then we'll have R. When theta is 0, R is going to be 0. And let's take a couple of values. When theta is going to be pi by 4, R is going to be 2 lots out, which is going to be pi by 2, which is going to be approximately 1.5, give or take. When we get pi by 2, we're going to get pi, which again is approximately now 3. If we get now pi, what we'll end up with is 2 pi. OK, so that's going to give us now 2 pi, which is give or take 6. Then if we go to 3 pi by 2, we're going to end up with 3 pi, which is give or take 9. And then we'll have on the last one, when we're at uh, uh, 2 pi, we'll end up with 4 pi, which will be approximately give or take just over 12. So we can plot these on, and we can plot these on our spiral. So we start here, and it becomes a spiral. So we have a point out here, and this is going to be about one and a half. Then we will be up here, and we'll have this point here, and this will be pi, okay? This will, that point right there will be pi in terms of its distance. This one is going to be 2 pi. This one here is going to be 
3 pi, and I appreciate my uh, diagram is not going to be hugely accurate. Let's just make it slightly more realistic. Uh, no, I don't want that. I want, uh, I want to move it. Let's move it. That's what I want. Uh, and then down here, when we're at 3, uh, uh, 3 pi by 2, we're at 3 pi, so there, and then we're out here somewhere. And all we need to do is a spiral, and we'll come up, and we should have gone through that point, as you can probably appreciate, round here, then it'll come down, and it'll come through this point right here, and then we'll come back up right there. And that's swept through two pi radians. We would simply place on here now, so this one is going to be uh, pi, this one is going to be 2 pi, this one is going to be 3 pi, and then this one will be 4 pi. And that's our curve. So let's look at that in autograph and see. Uh, so let's do the equation, enter equation. And on this one, we had r was equal to 2 theta. And I'm sure it'll enjoy doing this one. It'll look nice and pretty. There we go. There's our spiral. So we can just move that up like so. That's what we end up getting. So that's the spiral. R is equal to alpha theta is a spiral. So all you're doing is multiplying alpha, in this case 2, by the value of the uh, of theta. Right, let's look at A. Okay, R is equal to A sine theta. If you recognize this one, this 2 is a circle. Anything with a sine theta in will be symmetric about the y-axis in this form. And this is going to be a circle, and we'll put this on. And what we're going to have is a radius of a over 2 and a center of a over 2 and it looks something like that so if you can do these ones by recognition great if not we'll look at a way that we can do them so this point right here we could write a over 2 if we consider now r is equal to a sine theta let's multiply through by r we're going to get r squared is equal to a r sine theta we know r squared is x squared plus y squared and then what we're going to have then is a, and then we'll have y. R sine theta is y. So what I'm going to do is take this over the other side and complete the square. So x squared plus y squared minus a y is equal to naught. Completing the square, x squared plus, and then we'll have y minus a over 2, all squared minus a squared over 4 is equal to naught. And you can now see in Cartesian form x squared plus y minus a over 2 all squared will be equal to a squared over 4. So all this is is a circle, and then we've got a center 0, comma, a over 2. And this, remember, is a radius squared. So that's where we wind up, and that's what it's going to look like. So in this case, what we'd have is a over 2 as the center and the radius, and it's going to be symmetric. In the same way, if we had cosine, it would be round here, and then symmetric about the um, the x-axis. So, for example, if we had a cosine one, uh, let's put this on. The cosine one would end up looking something, give or take, like so. If we had it, and it would sit there. So there we go. That's um, I don't know what we want to do with that. We'll leave that there. Um, so let's have a look at our autograph, and we'll do this one. So let's clear these. Um, we'll delete those ones. So what we've got now equation. Okay, what was it? R was equal to, um, then we had a sine theta, and it should it should be working fine with this. Um, and there we go, that mighty circle. But as, as we can see on here, um, it just sits on uh, the uh, origin, and then we go upwards. So that's a circle. Right, let's now look at what we call a cardioid. Now, with these cardioids, there are two different types. There are those with a dimple and those without a dimple. I generally don't like to define a method to say which is which. I prefer to sketch them and get some idea. If you want to know if it's got a dimple or not, you can follow the, uh, this procedure. This is written in the form A, P, plus, Q, uh, cos theta. If P now is greater or equal to 2 Q, then we're not going to have a dimple. If Q, though, is going to be, let's remember this exactly, less or equal to P, but in turn, uh, 2 Q is greater than P, then we've got a dimple. I just like to look at it and think, is this one double that one? If it is, it's going to have a dimple. 
that's the way I like to think about it. I don't like, and generally I prefer to sketch it. it may not be 100% accurate, but I just think, is this one going to be double that one? If it is, I'm going to end up with a dimple. So the way I would approach this, if you're not cool with this, is just sketch up a table of values and generally ignore this approach. It has its uses, but it's not something I'd want to try and remember. I still struggle to keep it in my my memory bank I prefer just to sketch them right let's now let's uh, in fact let's not draw a table of values let's just draw the cosine curve that would be far better let's draw the cosine curve so here's cosine and what we'll do um, we want it a bit straighter than that don't we we will draw it now from um, 0 to 2 pi so we know with the cosine we come up we come round and it looks something like so let's consider this point right here when we've got 0 cosine is equal to 1. So let's take the initial line. If 0, cosine of 0 is 1, that's going to give me 3. 3 plus 4 is 7, so we end up with 7a. So this point right here is going to be 7a. Let's now consider pi by 2. Pi by 2 is going to give us now 0. So cosine of pi by 2 is 0. Therefore, 3 lots of 0 is 0. That leaves me 3 plus 0, which is going to give me 4a. And we can place this just on here, 4a. This is going to be symmetric about the x-axis. Let's now take this point here. This is going to be pi. The sine of pi, let's, uh, so cosine of pi, uh, I don't know why we want a, a line under it, it's going to be equal to negative 1. So in this case, I'm going to have 3 lots of negative 1 plus 4, which is just going to give me 1, which is going to be a. And we know that it's symmetric about the x-axis. And if we look at this point right here, we know 3 pi by 2 is naught. So this one, 2, is going to be 4a. Then all we need to do is draw this up, dimple included. And it's going to look something like this. And this really is a something like this. Um, that really is a something like that. In an exam, if you... I appreciate my 4a is a bit out of place. If you drew that in an exam, that would be perfectly fine. So that's what we call a cardioid for, um, I'm going to say obvious reasons, um, obvious reasons if autograph can draw it rather than my attempt. So let's um, get rid of that one and then we'll uh, draw this one. So let's get this one up. So what did we have on this one? We had R was equal to A and then we had on here it was 4 uh, plus 3 and then cos theta. So it should in, enjoy drawing this one. That should be perfectly fine. And this is what it will look like. And now hopefully you can see why it's called a cardioid. It kind of looks a bit like a heart. Just This isn't a good example, but in the main. And we can see we've got a dimple. So there we go, dimple included. Um, in fact, I think mine's, well, no, it's not better. I'd like to say it's better, but it's not. Okay, let's look at this one right now. We've got r is equal to a multiplied by the quantity 6 plus sine theta. This won't have a dimple. The way I look at this is this one isn't going to be double that one. So what we're going to simply have is an egg. Um, you either have an egg or you have one with a dimple. And what we'll do uh, with this one, it's a sine. So we're going to be symmetric about the, the y axis this time. And if we just consider now, let's just sketch up the, uh, let's just draw down here the sine curve. Okay, and if you want to go straight at this one, it's you. after a while you might be cool with them. Uh, that's a sine curve. So at zero, we've got zero. So if we start now at the initial line, what we've got sine of zero is zero. So this is just going to give me now 6a. And if I put that point on, that's going to be 6a. If we now go to this point right here, which is pi by 2, we know the sine of pi by 2 is going to give us 1. So sine of pi by 2 is 1. 1 plus 6 is 7. That's going to be 7a. And that will be just there. We know, again, sine of pi is naught, and we're symmetric, again, about the y-axis. So this point, sine of naught, is going to be naught, so I'm going to have 6a. And then this point right here, what we're going to have is, this is going to be 3 pi by 2. So 3 pi by 2, sine is equal to minus 1. So this is going to be minus 1 plus 6, which is 5, and then that's going to give us 5a. And we'll have this point down here. And that'll be 5a. And this will look like an egg. So we'll come out like so. And it'll look something like this. And then something, give or take, like so. So in an exam, any drawing along these lines with these points put on. And we know when we get back to 2 pi, we're going to get back here. Okay? So that's that's the logic. Um, let's get autograph to have a look at this one. 
Um, I've got a feeling it's gonna uh, my scaling is not fantastic and it might it might end up just giving us what looks like a circle um, so R was going to be equal to then we had a and then we had six what was it six plus sine theta so let's put that in and then we can have a look at what this looks like okay so there it goes it looks like a circle um, but it isn't, as you can see, what we've got this point right here is going through um, at 5, this point's going through at 7, and this point right here is going through where we wanted it to go through at 6 and that bit. So, so whilst it looks like a, um, it looks like a, let's have a see, it isn't a circle, as you can probably appreciate. So there we go, that's what that one looks like. So, so far we've looked at what we call um, cardioids, we've looked at spirals. We'll now look at just a couple of basic lines. So let's move on, that's what we want, there we go. Right, okay, so what we've got is r is equal to 2 sec theta and r is equal to 3 cosec theta. Um, fairly straightforward on these ones. If we simply rewrite this now as r is going to be equal to 2 over cos theta, and on this one, r is going to be equal to 3 over sine theta. All we do is multiply through. This one's going to be r cos theta is going to be equal to 2. And this one will be r sine theta is equal to 3. We know r cos theta is going to be equal now to x. So x would be equal to 2. r sine theta is equal to y. y is equal to 3. And we can place these on. And as you can probably tell, they're not going to be... Um, exceptionally inspirational but we'll get some idea so let's draw one on so this would be where x was going to be equal to 2 it'd be better in a, better, a different color wouldn't it let's do that one and then we'd have y is going to be equal to 3 and these lines would just continue and that's what we'd end up with so there we go basic intro to sketching polar curves and equations um, we might look at some more elaborate ones as we go but in the main these are the ones that you're going to be dealing with especially if you're working with the area trapped between curves there are certainly some more elaborate ones that you can come across but in reality the ones that we're going to be looking at in terms of finding the area are going to be uh, particular cases like these uh, we might have to find the area trapped uh, between a cardioid and a circle for example so these are all the, the key ones